Hi everyone, thank you very much for joining me today. I'm going to do a, a switching lab for you today. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a couple of switches and we're going to create an 802.1Q trunk between these two switches. Um, so I've got uh, a 3550 and a 2960 here, both connected using fast Ethernet 013. Um, so we'll, we'll configure the trunk across there um, and then we'll create a VLAN. So VLAN 100 on switch 1 and VLAN 100 on switch 2. Um, and by configuring the trunk it'll, it'll allow that VLAN to span from one switch to the other switch uh, and we'll test that by configuring a couple of access ports so I've got some routers here router 1 and router 2 so router 1 is connected to switch 1 on fast ethernet 01 and router 2 is connected to switch 2 on fast ethernet 02 um, so we'll configure some IP addresses on here so 10.1.1.1 and 10.1.1.2 um, we'll assign those access ports into VLAN 100 and we'll make sure that we can ping from router 1 to router 2 so that's basically allowing the traffic from switch 1 across the trunk connection into switch 2 so simple straightforward lab to do um, a little bit of information about the, the switch port modes um, so the, the, the LAN ports you can configure them into different modes um, so the first one is access mode. So if you're configuring access modes, that's basically uh, putting the LAN into a permanent non-trunking mode. Okay. Um, so you would normally connect your laptops, PCs, or like uh, end user devices would normally connect into an access port. Uh, if you're creating a trunk port, that's if you want the VLAN to span from one switch to the other switch. So in our case, in our example, we're going to be spanning VLAN 100 from this switch to the second switch. So that's when we need to use a trunk connection. Without a trunk connection, the VLAN cannot be spanned from one side to the other. So you can configure the port into a permanent trunking mode by just saying switch port mode trunk. Um, and, it, and it converts it into a trunk mode and it doesn't negotiate to convert it to anything else so it's basically puts it into a permanent trunk mode um, the other option obviously is the um, dynamic auto and dynamic desirable um, if you configure the LAN port as a dynamic auto mode uh, it's saying that the port is willing to convert to a trunk but it will not convert to a trunk unless the other side is set to either a trunk permanent trunk or it's set to the next option which is dynamic desirable right if you've got two uh, ports which are both set to dynamic auto auto so in, in our situation if both fast ethernet 13 were configured as dynamic auto it would never form a trunk you'd have to have one end configured as a trunk a permanent trunk or the other end is dynamic desirable okay um, otherwise it we won't send um, what we call DTPs, this is dynamic trunk protocol frames um, across. Without these DTP frames it cannot negotiate what it's trying to become a trunk or an access port or what. Um, so those are the different uh, port modes. The last one here is the non-negotiate so that puts um, the LAN port into a permanent trunking mode but it it prevents the port from sending any DTP frames so you must configure the the neighboring switch as either a trunk um, sorry as a trunk in order to establish um, the, the, the trunk connection okay so if we move on to our our lab now um, okay and just Okay, so um, this is my lab. So I've got a I've got a terminal server where I can access my switches from. So if we go into switch one, oh, and do a no to that. Enable conf t host name sw1. Um, and then interface fast Ethernet zero slash thirteen. Switch port mode. If you do switch port mode trunk it will throw up an error because you, you need to configure the encapsulation type first so it says an interface whose encapsulation is auto cannot be configured as a trunk so it's by default it's set to auto so if you're trying to make it into a permanent trunking port you have to tell it what encapsulation it is so that's the command for that is switch port trunk encapsulation you do a question mark and you can see the different options available so you can do 
negotiate dot one q or isl now because this is a 3550 switch it's still got the option of dot one q or isl um, some of the modern switches nowadays do not have that option so my 2960 doesn't have that option you have to just configure it as a dot one q trunk and nothing else. there's no other options in terms of encapsulation but f because of this old switch you have to tell it it's encapsulation so I would go encapsulation dot one q and now if you do the same command switch port mode trunk it accepts it because now we've we've fixed it as a as a trunk port now okay so if we come out of this one now and then show interfaces trunk so you can see that it's now configured fast ethernet 13 and it's the mode is on so it's permanently on the encapsulation is 802.1q status is trunking and then all the vlans are allowed another good command to do is show interfaces fast ethernet 0 slash 13 switch port and, and as you can see the administrative mode is trunk operational mode is trunk uh, and then the encapsulation is dot one q trunking mode is on and then the if it was in access mode it, the default would be access vlan one but um, so but it's basically confirming that it's configured as the trunk so we now need to configure switch two so if we just control z out of that one so if we're going to switch two There we go, just say no to that. Enable conf t hostname sw2. Okay, so as I said, th th this is a 2960. Um, the commands on this one will be slightly different. So if we go interface fast ethernet 0 slash 13, if we do switch port and let's do a quick question mark, we can see all your options available. So you can configure it as an access port, okay, or you can configure it as a trunk port, okay. Um, if you go for mode, then that's where you can set up the, um, the the dynamic auto or desirable. So, if we just look at the options, so if you go trunk, and so you can do trunk, and then you say what's which VLANs are allowed, um, or if you go switch port mode and then do a question mark again you can tell it to set it into a permanent trunking mode switch port mode trunk you could just press enter there and it will become an 802.1q trunk but in this in this um, switch there's no option like the other one switch port trunk there's no encapsulation option like there was in the other one so in this one you have to say switch port trunk and then that's it right um, so what we're going to do is we're going to we'll test this out and put it into a dynamic mode okay so we'll go back into that so switch port mode okay and we can do switch port mode dynamic and now you have the options of either doing auto or desirable so as I, as I mentioned earlier if you if you have both ends as auto then it will never work but we've already configured our 3550 as as a permanent trunk so in this case if I do go auto it it will work oops sorry if you go auto yes it will work fine or if you put it into desirable it will work fine as well so let's just put that into auto show Z just do a show interfaces trunk yeah and you can see that the fast Ethernet 13 now in auto mode it's encapsulation is 802.1q it's the only option available status is trunking and all the VLANs are allowed to go across that trunk so that's that's basically set up so you could actually change that dynamic auto uh, to desirable or you can configure it as a trunk it's not a problem it will work okay so we've we've now got the the trunks configured and that trunk has now been created uh, we just need to create the VLANs uh, and then put the, the um, access ports where the routers are connected into those VLANs so we'll keep it straightforward we'll go back to switch one again uh, and then we'll create the VLAN so go conf t VLAN 100 create that and then we'll call it give it a name so name VLAN 100 test you can give it whatever name you like uh, you know it's not a problem uh, come back out of that um, and then if you do interface fast ethernet 0 slash 1 that's where my 
uh, router 1 is connected so we say switch port and then mode access so that configures it as an access port okay and then switch port access VLAN 100 okay so if we just do a show VLAN we should be able to see that that port is now in that VLAN so there we go so we've got VLAN 100 we've created that VLAN it's active and we've got one port associated with that VLAN so fast Ethernet 01 is associated with that VLAN all right we'll just do the um, second switch as well okay the conf T VLAN 100 name VLAN 100 test okay and then we'll configure this time it's fast Ethernet 0 slash 2 so interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 2 switch port mode access so we're creating an access port and then switch port access VLAN 100 Control Z do the show VLAN and you can see we've got VLAN 100 it's up and running it's active and we've got um, fast Ethernet 02 assigned into VLAN 100 okay so um, we're now ready to configure our routers so if we go to router 1 uh, enable that okay so I've got gig 00 connected to that so you go conf t interface gigabit 0 slash 0 IP address 10.1.1.1.5.255.255.0 and then we'll do a no shut on that okay and then we need to do the router 2 now so that's my terminal server but that's gigabit 00, zero here so conf t interface gigabit 0 slash 0 IP address 10.1.1.2 and then do a nice shout okay so while that's coming up I'll just do uh, a couple of commands on the switches um, oops show IP in brief so that interface is up and running on on the on the router if you go to switch one um, let's go to switch one if we do a show spanning tree VLAN 100 um, so you can see that fast Ethernet 01 is up and running that's the first router and that, that fast Ethernet 013 is the trunk interface both up and running and forwarding so that's looking good from that switch perspective if we look at switch 2 again we do the same command spanning tree VLAN 100 and both of these are now forwarding so um, we should be able to ping from one end to the other end so uh, if we just go back to router 1 oops, sorry that's the wrong one router 1 and then do a ping 10.1.1.2 and that's successful so that's working so that's now pinging across the trunk and we can do the same test in reverse so we ping from router 2 so ping 10.1.1.1 and that's successful as well so there you have it um, simple straightforward lab uh, configuring an 802.1q trunk thank you very much for listening I hope you enjoyed that